In this video, I'd like to talk about just what's next inside of Autodesk Inventor. So now we've gone through the basics class, there's a lot more you can learn about inside this software. It doesn't stop with just what we did here. There is a lot more advanced part modeling techniques. There's also more advanced assembly modeling techniques as well. And I also just want to show you a few other environments which different versions of Inventor have. First of all, I'd like to start off talking about sheet metal. Here I can create thin walled parts based on thickness rules and unfold methods. I also get another set of tools just for sheet metal work. So up here you see commands like face and flange, contour flange, lofted flanges. Down near the end, I can create a flat pattern off my parts. They can also tell me if faces overlap. In this case, I have some overlapping faces. So it has some error checking built in as well. From this flat pattern, I can create a DXF for a laser cutter or other machine to program for a CNC perhaps or a water jet to cut my parts out. So that's just another type of design file we have. Go ahead and close that one out. Next up, we're going to take a look at design accelerators. These are inside the assembly environment. When we want to do something a little bit more advanced and take some engineering knowledge that Inventor might have, we go up here to our design tab. And there's a bunch of tools up here called the design accelerators. We have bolted connections. We have different types of pin connections. We also have a frame generator to help us insert a frame and build structural shapes in steel. We also have frame analysis. We have a shaft generator, spur, worm, and bevel gears, bearings, V-belt, synchronous belt, roller chain, key creation, disc, linear and cylindrical cams, parallel involute spline connections for hubs and shafts, O-rings, as well as different types of spring creations. Now, just to show one of these real quick, I'm going to go to my shaft generator here. This piece on the inside of this blower was created with the shaft generator. So I can go through and pick different aspects about the shaft, so that way I don't have to actually create it as a separate part and then assemble it. I can actually build it right here inside the assembly. Furthermore, I have calculations in here, which I can run this through. Let me just fix the screen here a little bit. So I can actually do different loadings on here to figure out whether or not it's going to fail or not, and also get different graphs out of that too. Some of these next items are items we find in Inventor Professional. It's a different version of Inventor. So there's two main versions. We have Inventor Series, very basic Inventor. We also have Inventor Professional. Now Inventor Professional includes additional modules. This is one of them. And this will be a very simple FEA analysis. Now, if you have Inventor Professional, you'll have an Environments tab up here filled with different types of environments we can launch. Here I am going to begin the Stress Analysis environment. I already have some preloaded stresses on here. I have some bearing loads and some force loads acting on this as well as some constraints that hold it in place so it doesn't invalidate my results. I'm simply going to run a simulation here based on what I already have. And this will return to me different stress and strain and displacement factors for what's happening with my design. I can also animate these to quickly show someone in an exaggerated fashion how the part is actually being affected. This is definitely an exaggeration. I can actually make this a actual deformation. Let me do displacement here. It actually displaces very little. And when I go to animate this, you can't really tell too much that it's growing. But for someone who may be considered a layman, we might want to come in there and adjust that to be a little bit more deformed. I can also probe this one for maximum stresses, maximum displacements. I can also run this through a parametric analysis to give it, let's say, three or four different variables like thickness and arc slot size and diameter and overall diameter. And based on those different parameters, tell it a certain range of values and then have it do multiple simulations on that. So this can do what's called a parametric study. Now this also works for more than just parts. This also works for assemblies for FEA as well. This is just showcasing it in a very simple form here. So I'm going to go ahead and finish that environment. Go to our next one here. Next we're going to look at dynamic simulation also part of the FEA and simulation part of Inventor Professional. So again, this is another environment, and this one I'm going to start the dynamic simulation. And this one's already been set up. Here I set up things called dynamic simulation joints. I can also set up traces and items to track movement. I can set up an output grapher to tell me positional changes, velocity changes, moments of inertia, get reactive forces on my joints inside of this as well. Just for this very simple simulation though, I'm going to go ahead and start this. Here at this trebuchet, I have a weight dropping. I have contact between these two parts here. This is actually going very slow right now. This is 0 0.15, 0 0.16. This is 0 0.1 of second right now. 
So it's dropping actually very fast, but it's recording all these items here on the output grapher. And it's actually now launching the ball for me. It's actually recording numerous variables. Yeah, a couple of things I could adjust is, you know, perhaps stop that cotter pin from spinning around so wildly. But there goes my ball. And you'll see this will hit itself and clang back. So I do have a reactive force acting there. I have a moment acting on this, which I can report on. I have a velocity that when it hits that, when it comes back, what speed it's coming back at. So a lot of things you can report on here. Let me go ahead and stop this. Okay, we'll go ahead and close out dynamic simulation. Next up, we'll look at some of the other environments of Inventor Professional. This one is the cable and harness environment. This allows us to do wiring. So here I have a computer case and I can actually run wires from my components using pin to pin connections. And I can also do ribbon cables. So if I zoom in here a little bit, see I have a ribbon cable over here and I have standard pin and cable connections here and here. Now, if I were to move one of these devices like this drive, maybe it gets a little bit longer as far as its depth going back into the case then that'll automatically adjust my wire and cable harness to update based on that. The reporting I can get out of here is actually how much length, let's say red wire or green wire, I actually need to route through my cables. So it's a pretty intelligent way to do cable and harness work. If you have need for ribbon cables, of course you can see that you can also do a double fold ribbon cable there. And we can also lay these out into a nail board fashion for cable and harness work. Another part of the routed systems is the tube and pipe module. With this, you can create automated routes for tube and pipe runs and flexible hose. That way, if something were to change, like let's say this item here shifts over to the right a little bit, it would automatically adjust my hoses and my pipe so that it works correctly. If I didn't have that functionality, I would have to come in here and move this one, move all these other components separately, also come down here and trim this pipe up to be a shorter length or a longer length, change all these locations down here and where they might be constrained to, on the subsequent drainage route here. So I would have a lot of work to do that tube and pipe would do automatically for me. Very powerful aspect of Inventor here. So essentially the way this is done is you route your routing points through here and then you populate a route based on that. Let me go ahead and activate this one as an example. Now this one has all these different segments in here but it also has different routes. Let me find the correct corresponding route. There's route five, six, four, this is for run number two. So I believe that's route number six down here. So you can say I have different line segments in here that represent the center lines of my route. I could adjust that as need be, let's say. I can do different tube and pipe items here, like putting in alternate routes, editing the position of this route. I can also put a different twist on it and such, or just change the style. And let's say this is a different type of pipe. Let's say this is going to be joint PVC fittings. So now I finish the route. It's auto-populating with new types of fittings. Of course, these aren't going to marry up to these other ones here correctly, but it gives me an idea of exactly what I can do there. So I got all new PVC fittings there instead, and I didn't have to constrain any of those. It basically put them along the route center lines for me. So same thing here. It does produce valid cut lengths, just like cable and harness would. For the amount of hose that I have here, I would also get a hose values for this, get the actual value instead of having to try to draw a spline and then lay it out like a piece of string. Next thing we'll look at is tooling. Inventor has a very robust tooling package for injection mold design. It can do in core and cavity work as well as build the entire mold base. So as you can see here with this mold layout tab I have, I have plastic part tools, I can select materials and adjust isotropic shrinkage based on a mold flow database of almost seven to 8,000 different types of resins. I have my core and cavity tools, patterning, auto runners for the sketches for the cooling channels, put the runners in, secondary sprues, gate locations, the cold wells. You can do quite a bit there as far as just the core and cavity work. And I have a whole nother mold assembly to put in a mold base, ejectors, sliders, lifters. This is really a great tool to use if you have a lot of injection molding work ahead of you. Even if you don't make the mold bases, you still could create your core and cavity that a mold maker would use your core and cavity for their workpiece pocket. So a lot of versatility there, a lot of tools designed just for injection molding. Lastly, we'll take a look at a standard part of the software. This is called iLogic. With iLogic, you can create configurated designs. So here I have this treehouse. Now this playset has a bunch of rules to control design and how my design needs to update. Let's say I work for a playhouse manufacturer. If I had to go through here and design a secondary playhouse with a tunnel enclosure and three swings and a rock wall, I'd have a lot of different modeling tasks on my hands. Now if I've already gone through and set these rules up, 
It's just a matter of launching a form to take care of it for me. I'm actually going to launch a little form here. And I'm going to tell it that I want a double base. I want climbing bars, a rock wall, climbing bars on the other side as well. I can't get enough climbing bars. I want a bridge connection between the two sections. And on the right railing, let's do a slide on the right side. I'll say OK to this. It's going to run through a series of rules and automatically turn things on and turn things off based on how I went through and designed this original kind of master based assembly. So when I'm done, I get all my modeling files taken care of. I do get some messages here about my issues with my model if I had any. Sometimes they're informative, sometimes they're cautionary, sometimes they're telling you that you have perhaps an issue in your rule that you've created, but it is very telling about what's going on. Now you can't argue that this was pretty nice to be able to create a configurated design from this and then use that inside of sales or inside of marketing for someone outside of engineering. So they could very easily create a quote for you and get it to engineering to get it off into production very fast. Again, this has kind of just been a look at kind of the high points, if you will, about where you can go with the software more than just the basics.